No, Let's hear the president when he was speaking today uh, defending that lockdown that he announced on Friday last week. The measures that we have imposed are not my measures. These are measures that have been brought to us by those who have the knowledge, the professionals, the doctors, the medical practitioners, the scientists. They went through and we had long, long sessions with them. And this was their recommendation, that if we are to stem this virus from continuing to grow, kill people, the only thing we can do is to lock down. So the president basically saying the lockdown is going nowhere and at, until and unless that positivity rate goes down, that, that, that this virus is under control to some degree. Uh, but that lockdown itself um, came as quite a confusing announcement. True. I remember lots of discussions, yes. for example, about what had been locked. You know, remember the last time when Nairobi was locked down, we called it that, but it really has never been the true mm. sense of the lockdown in other places where people can't even move out of At their all. houses or mm. their immediate neighborhoods. But be that as it may, initially people thought, you know, Nairobi, Kiambu, Nakuru, all of these places were locked individually so that yeah. if you're in Nairobi, you couldn't go to Kajiado, Machakos, and Kiambu, and all of that. But then later on, that was clarified. Then there was the other thing of, um, I think, flights and, yeah. and, and, and all of those things. Quite some clarifications uh, needed to have been done, Jamila. True, true, true. Joe. In fact, there are two issues that I, are there two many, uh, statements that I have an issue with. One is the open ended lockdown. The pre president said, until further notice. So, what does until further notice mean? It brings some form of uncertainty for many people because let's say for a business person, if you tell them, for instance, you'll be under lockdown for 60 days, they can start planning for what they will do in the next 60 days. Maybe they'll decide, well, I'm going to cut salary, my staff salary for about a half for the next 60 days. I'm going to suspend them or I'm going to, to let, let them go permanently. So people are supposed to be able to plan, giving them specific time, specific uh, timelines and all that helps people to respond. What to anaweza kujipanga? So when I do this lockdown, 60 60 days, what do I do? There'll be no flights going to a particular place for 60 days. This is how we'll be affected, tourism and the transport sector and all that. Number two, the word immediate effect. When the president said these orders take immediate effect, like no, no, yes. he said, he midnight, said midnight, midnight, which is Saturday. Mm -hmm. Yes. How yes. did we battle with whether that was that Friday midnight or oh, the yeah. next Saturday day. midnight? It was. Yeah. And then now when you look at that, you should be thinking about, okay, there are a lot of clarifications that had to be made after that, that Joe mentioned yeah. it. We're not sure. Are we all in the same zone? Yeah. Are we in d different zones? Even as journalists, when we were trying to report on that, there was a lot of confusion amongst ourselves. Until then, we, there was a tweet by Nzio Kawaita explaining that, oh, yeah, all of you are in the same zone and all that. Then we had the clarification from the Kenya, from, the, from KCAA. Then we had the other one from railways. And then we had the, the press statement by the government spokesman a few days later, just trying to explain that. And I think having to make all these clarifications mm -hmm. makes it a bit untidy yeah. in terms of government communication. And it does not paint the president in a good way. It sort of almost embarrasses him. Because what he had said should be clear to everybody. And yeah. even not having to issue clarifications after clarifications after that. should be anticipated that, mm -hmm. that yes. this one can be confusing. Let's so, all that, for yeah. example, like the, 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 the counties, all someone needed to have. Uh, that means that if you are in this place, you, you can, can still go here, to Kiambu, whatever. But not something, here. something like that would right. really just make it so clear. And that would have been like just maybe mm. one more paragraph. Mm. Yeah. I agree. I agree. And I think for us, we give this um, the implementation of the lockdown a lot of importance rather than so what? People are under lockdown. How will we cushion them? How will we help them? We've seen in other countries across the world, yes, our economies and theirs are totally different, but the government is take, takes measures to try and cushion people um, on, on how they can at least continue their lives in some, some small way. Um, instead of just saying lockdown and that's it, we've had mandamanos uh, from, from business people about what do we do? The hashtag, I think, unlock the country mm -hmm. was trending yeah. for some days. Joe. And, and finally, um, I think we've seen, I think, two counties, uh, Machakos, Governor Alfred Mutua, and I think in Nakuru, the governor there also, yeah. they've introduced some small measures here and there. Tax relief for Mamamboga, for Mutua Boda Boda, for land rates here yeah. and there. Those things actually do matter, and it should be something that should be replicated across the country. But, but Yvonne, all, all, all this notwithstanding, the truth of the matter is that this COVID-19 uh, uh, third wave, or, 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 or that's what it's been called, uh, appears to be quite 
vicious, so to speak. Mm. We've seen, um, you know, those statistics that for many days, uh, sometimes it was even difficult to know because it, people were not <coughs> even coming out to say this person had COVID and everything. Yeah. But increasingly, we've seen real people, mm. people that we can identify yeah. with. Yeah. A number of people you speak to will say, I know my cousin, my what, uh, what my yeah. friend, what not. So increasingly, people are saying, hey, someone I know actually has died of this thing. So there is also the real issue that COVID-19 is here. It is devastating. People are dying. ICU beds, yeah. nowhere to be found. Lots yeah. of people running from one hospital to the other trying to get space for their kin. There are no easy answers um, in dealing with this. Um, you know, we only wish that whoever was was alive during the Spanish flu or the bubonic plague would be here to tell us, oh, yeah, yeah you know, we went through this and we, this is how we handled the second, third, fourth, fifth wave um, of, of this thing. Um, the truth is we all know somebody who has died of COVID by now. Um, has lost a spouse, a family member, you know, a relative. Um, you know, at this point, um, I was um, at a hospital a few days ago, um, and I was telling, uh, you know, the, the, our fellow editors, this: there is no space in hospitals. Mm -hmm. I was in a private hospital. This it was on Sunday. Um, they have this chart, uh, you know, I won't name the hospital, but they have this chart at the A and E center where they look at bed status. And I saw COVID beds, zero. ICU, zero. HDU, two. And there was a family there that was begging for a bed, and there were none. In fact, the doctor was helping them and calling you know, other hospitals and saying, there were none. And they were sent home and told, well, you know, if a vacancy becomes available, and in ICU, a vacancy becomes available when two things happen. One, they recover, hallelujah. Two, they die. Yep. Things are thick. The numbers are what they are. Um, but on the other hand, this is the situation we're faced with. I know everybody's talking about tax relief measures and economic measures. And like Jamila was saying, what is happening uh, you know, abroad in other countries? To be honest, we're not in a good place. And those tax relief measures that were announced last year were really helpful to Mwanainchi, but they were still difficult for government, which then uses the very same taxes, the very same money that is circulating in the economy for development. In fact, and, the and IMF, also that same and COVID that same interventions. COVID. In, in that fact, the IMF, yes, did talk about when you know they were giving us the loan, and they said these tax relief measures need to end because it was denying the government the chance to respond to emergencies such as COVID-19. There's many others, there's HIV and AIDS, there's many other communicable diseases such as cancer, as well as development, because, you know, guess what, we have to uh, move on with development. And where are we with, with our economic uh, situation? Things are really tight. We've gotten, uh, you know, debt suspension relief from the Paris Club. We got one from China for 27 billion shillings payment that was due um, by June this year. Um, and it's definitely going to be painful, uh, particularly for those, what, uh, roughly about 12 million residents of the now five disease infested zone a phrase by the way I, I personally had a problem with could easily have said something like uh, the five counties of concern but disease infested yeah. you know all of these terminologies like like are very fest key festering, festering with infections you know? at it every seems corner like, yeah, we're, we're like in fact now that we're giving all of these analogies we do feel like the lepers Mm -hmm. you know, who are sent to the forest to deal with it, die, or whatever happens. Um, but here's the other issue. Much like with, um, you know, the, the measures, uh, containment measures that we had last year, what is the plan? Again, this year. Last year, the plan was that what you do, you initiate a circuit breaker, right? So that all of these cases, you know, it stops and we reduce the pressure on our healthcare systems. But in the meantime, uh, what was the plan last year? You know, to increase our capacity uh, in hospitals, uh, you know, and a number of other things. So what's the plan this time around? With all of these 12, 12 million people in these five counties, are we vaccinating more aggressively? Um, are we testing more? 
Um, what are we doing with the hospital situation? Where are we with those infamous 300 beds? We have a governor like Machakos governor who's complaining on Twitter. Where are those 300 beds they were supposed to have? So we break the circuit fine. Uh, just by containing the movement. And then what happens when we emerge out of this? We've been here before, remember? And here we are again. So how do we make sure that we are not again in another containment measure mm -hmm. uh, or restrictive movements, um, you know, another few months from now? Uh, so the truth is, it's going to be difficult either way. You have a health crisis uh, causing an economic one, and then the economic one cyclically then causes another health crisis. It's, it's not going to be easy for anyone. Yeah, Joe, I look at it this way. I think this is the most difficult period to be in charge of a country. Yeah. Because what you do, you're damned. What you don't do, you're, you're damned. damned. Either way. Because, for example, if you were to let the country operate as is normally, obviously the number of infections would rise and the number of deaths would also rise. Um, we saw what happened in, uh, were, in, in USA, yeah. and a lot of people were blaming Trump for it. We saw what happened in Tanzania. Quite Even a number of UK. people, yeah. Quite a number of people are blaming the late uh, President John Pombe Magufuli about it. But on the other hand, if you impose sanctions that will, you know, deal with people. Um, economic blows like we see now in the entertainment industry, in the hospitality industry, even in the transport industry, there are people who will complain. And they have a right to complain because mm. their livelihood is going away. But this is the delicate balancing act of lives and livelihoods. Um, very, very delicate. On, on the other hand, we are dealing with challenges that are not necessarily as a result of COVID-19. Yeah. Some of these problems are long-standing. Mm. Um, economic challenges are not, they, they, they didn't begin last year. Mm -hmm. We're dealing with economic challenges that began 10 years ago, 11 years ago, 12 years ago. We're dealing with health situations that are as old as our country. Yeah. I mean, you saw a list that we even read out here, uh, I think sometime last year. Mm -hmm. Some counties did not even have a single ICU bed, mm -hmm. one for like 50 plus years of independence yep. and a county or a district then does not have an ICU bed, does not have, have an ICU facility and here we are talking about lack of ICU facilities then it shows us that we have a serious challenge. The other day our uh, CS for Health went on, uh, count, uh, went, went on county tours and we saw some governors parading beds. Some of those beds we later learned were borrowed were hired from some private hospitals just to put a show. You know what we call Vipindre, that we are prepared, even though that was not the case. Economic challenges that we are dealing with um, long-standing. I was looking at the Division of Revenue uh, Bill 2021. Out of unexpected revenue, or projected revenue of 1.7 trillion shillings, 1.17 trillion shillings was to go to financing public debt. You remember? Yes. So it tells us that some of the challenges that we are dealing with are long-standing, only that they have been aggravated by the COVID-19 situation. And so it's that delicate balancing act that <coughs> certain things will affect us, all of us, because we've seen job losses, we've seen pay cuts, we've seen loss of livelihoods, we've seen people dying, we've seen the number of infections increasing. So it's a challenge that we have to deal with, and it's a very delicate scenario um, and very difficult time to be in charge of, the, of, of our country. But suffice to say, I think it is also important to keep reminding ourselves and everybody else, just take care, take care of yourself, you know, at a personal level. But at the same time, I hasten to add, even the implementation of the curfew rules, I think it also needs to be a little humane. Mm -hmm. You saw on Friday, that very day when the an announcement was made, you saw people running running in, in, in the city center yeah. because it's 8 o'clock. It, it was not anticipated. Some guys were on their way mm -hmm. from one place to another. So I think certain things need to have been done. Make it a bit more clearer. It don't, don't be ambiguous. And at the same time, like I remember that Friday, we were on our way to Kitale to, um, uh, for the, for the send-off of our former colleague, uh, Robin. Yeah. And we got to a point where people were asking, do we continue yes. or do we come back. Right. So some ambiguity was not very good. So some of these things needed to be clarified. And to see men and women, even some with children yeah, in the city, in the city. Street, running up and down, some even arrested, uh, it was a little uncomfortable in my opinion. I, I, I know you really want to say something, but uh, we need to talk about, yeah, I was, I was, we need, 
I was going to listen to Uhuru. Yes, please, let's do lockdown. that so that we can actually talk about the vaccines. <laughs> let's listen to Uhuru defending the lockdown. Working day and night to get the vaccines. 